Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk with Sherry Weary, where we have real discussions to facilitate healing. Our topic today is more than a few bad apples. Here in the US, there is tons of protests and huge discussions happening around the issue of police brutality. And you have some individuals who are being dismissive of the existence of police brutality. And one of the statements that they will use is that, oh, it's just one bad apple or just a few bad apples. However, that's not the case. Police brutality is able to exist and thrive because of a system. And if we want to get rid of police brutality as a whole, we have to dismantle the system so that we can stop having individual um, incidents of excessive force and police brutality here in the U.S. So I'm going to go through and give a few examples that shows that, again, it's a systemic. It's not just a few bad apples. So first, when you look at the uh, murder of Ahmad Arbery, here it is, is that he's murdered by two individuals, one who is actually a retired police officer. And for three months, his murderers are able to just walk scot-free. They're not arrested. They're not charged. Nothing happens. They're able to just go about living their life just as normal. Now, with the fact that there was a video that shows what happened, or at least a portion of what occurred, but it definitely shows the point of, of contact when Ahmad actually was murdered, you had two DAs and other staff of the police force who saw this video and did not pursue charges. They deliberately did not pursue charges against the two individuals who murdered Ahmad. Okay, so that's one issue or example rather of it being systemic is that it goes beyond just even police officers. I mean, at this point, one of the murderers, he's no longer even on the force, but yet and still he's able to experience immunity for three months because of the fact that he's not arrested or charged for murdering someone for no just cause at all. Okay. Then, um, a few days ago, actually last week, there was an incident in New York where you had a 75-year-old man who was part of a protest. He walks up to a group of police officers. He doesn't have a weapon. He doesn't seem uncontrolled or violent or like a threat. He's simply walking up to a group of police officers. As he gets close enough to them, two of the police officers shove and push him to the ground. This 75-year-old man hits the ground so hard that within seconds, you actually see blood near his head as he is laying there on the ground. No one helps him. No one, you know, goes to see if he is okay. They actually just continue um, to stand around him. A few of them, a few other police officers keep walking forward. They did call for a medical response team um, and he was able to later get medical attention. So as a result of these two individuals who pushed a 75-year-old man to the ground, they were suspended and there's a current investigation to determine if his sex of force was used and then what disciplinary action actions would be taken against those two officers if it is determined that they use excessive force. Now, as a result of there being an announcement that there would be a suspension of these two officers who pushed this 75-year-old man to the ground so hard that within seconds, blood was seen poodling um, around his head, 57 members of the emergency response team who are utilized to actually work protests and riots and things of that nature, they all resigned to show solidarity for the two individuals who were suspended for possible excessive use of force. I'm going to say it definitely was excessive use. Tons of other people agree, but hey, the investigation has to go forward. So I understand they have to go through the process and protocol um, when it comes to allegations of excessive force. But what is so ironic is that these 57 individuals, they did not push the 75-year-old man to the ground. They were not seen on the video beating him up or you know doing something else to him to, in order to endanger his well-being or safety um, or you know exacting value against him, but yet and still they decide to resign from the emergency response team to show solidarity for the two individuals who use excessive force. That's systemic. Now, mind you, the 57 individuals are still on the police force as well. All right, then you have another incident in Atlanta where there were six Atlanta officers who were actually fired, um, and this happened pretty quickly. Within a matter of days, they were fired from the force for excessive use against two college students. This included the t a car of the college students being, um, the tires being slashed, 
the windows being broken into, the two college students being yanked out of the car, being tased, and just, it's a horrific video to see as well. Don't really recommend for you to watch it, but if you would like to see it, you can certainly do research and find it online as well. So because of the fact that there was video evidence and what makes that even worse is that that was actually broadcasted live on TV as well. So people were able to see this live, this live incident of police brutality that was totally unnecessary um, and caused these two individuals, these two college students to have a very um, traumatizing experience with the police as a result of just trying to get home just after the protest, okay? Now, you have these two incidents, right? A few days ago, the Brevard County chapter of the Fraternal Order of Police, they actually posted, and they're in Florida, they posted two posts on Facebook saying that they are hiring and were reaching out to the men, uh, the... 57 individuals from New York who were part of the emergency response team. So they called them the New York 57 or the Buffalo 57. And then they were also um, referencing the Atlanta 6, which are the six individuals who were fired and telling them that they are still hiring. There was another Facebook post that also uh, was reaching out to the Minneapolis Police Department because right now in uh, Minneapolis, there are discussions happening around the whole idea of defunding the police. Um, and in result, of the four officers who were uh, now charged in the murder of George Floyd. And so what's so crazy about this whole development is the fact that Florida, you all are nowhere near uh, Minneapolis, you're nowhere near New York, you're nowhere near Atlanta, but yet and still you are making a plea for individuals who are implicated in issues or incidents of police brutality and use of excessive force, you are now reaching out to them to tell them, hey, we got jobs, come and work for us. And while uh, this Florida, um, the uh, Fraternal Order of Police down in Brevard County was very explicit, this actually happens all the time. So it's not an isolated, isolated incident, even with Florida making this post. The posts have since been deleted. And then you also have um, the Brevard County Sheriff Office who put out an official statement saying that there is no official affiliation with the Fraternal Order of Police that made that plea to say, hey, we're hiring, come and see us. Um, and they said that the posts were not authorized. Those posts saying that, hey, Minneapolis, New York, Atlanta, y'all can come work for us has since been deleted, but the damage is already done because plenty of people have, have saw the post and took screenshots. So we know that it did exist. So all of these examples to show again that it's systemic. One final thing that I want to point out is that even in the midst of the protests against police brutality, you have had more incidents of police brutality. The Atlanta incident is not the only case. The incident in New York with the 75 year old man is not the only case. You can just do a simple Google search of police brutality or a sex of force at protests and you will find tons of incidences of more police Police brutality happening at a protest against police brutality. It is systemic. And one other point that I would like to point out is that even with the protests, there have been some rioting and there's been some looting as well. Um, my own statement that I will say, while I do not, um, will not be a person that will tell people, hey, go out and riot, go ahead and loot. The one thing I do want to emphasize is that riots is the language of the unheard. And that's from Martin Luther King, who was a peaceful protester who was murdered and were assassinated, but we're going to discuss that in another video. So I want to get too much into that. And so with having these, um, these incidences of police brutality happening and it's a protest against police brutality. And now you have thousands of protesters, not just around the country, but around the world who are speaking out against police brutality, against racial injustice, against excessive force from the police. And because you have a fraction of those protesters who are rioting and who are looting, now you have individuals who are trying to taint and throw away the entire cause, despite the fact that you have thousands of protesters 
who have not participated in the rioting and looting as well. If you have a small fraction of rioters and looters who can go ahead and quote unquote tarnish the entire movement that is happening right now, not just here in the US, but it's around the world, then how can that same analogy not be applied to police as well? Why is it that just a few bad apples exist and the rest of the police officers are good and they're not bad and let's not bash them? And I'm not saying that we should bash the police, but I do want to really point out the fact that you have police brutality that exists because of the officers who do not speak up because of the officers who see what's happening and they don't participate, but they turn a blind eye because of police officers and other individuals that's involved in our justice system who just turns a blind eye to what's happening and do not take the appropriate actions to make sure that more incidents do not occur. Even when you look at Chauvin, Chauvin is one of the four individuals who murdered George, George Floyd. He is the one that is actually seen kneeling on George Floyd's necks for eight minutes and 46 seconds. He had 18 other incidences or complaints against him when it came to excessive force, and he was still on the police force. If proper steps had been taken, proper action had been taken, when any of those other complaints had been made, he would not have been on the police force at that time and been able to murder George Floyd. And as we could still have George, um, George Floyd here with us today. So I want everyone to again recognize that again, police brutality is systemic, is more than a few bad apples. And there's so many other people that allows the system to be able to thrive. And so no matter what part that you have, whether you're a police officer, the family member of police officer, or you're a supervisor, you're a judge, you're a DA, whoever you are, you have to really look at the fact that this is systemic and make sure that you are doing your part to dismantle the system so that we can stop having incidences of police brutality and so that we can stop having people senselessly murdered when they encounter the police. That has been our discussion for today. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment below. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel so that you will never miss any updates when I post new material. And you can also keep in contact with me on social media. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Sherry underscore wearing. You can like my Facebook business page, which is Sherry C. Weary. And then you can also check out my website, which is SherryWeary.com. All right, take care and I will see you guys later. Bye.